But I'm going to do some Tankara style fishing today. I've been meaning to try this Tankara rod out for some time. I don't know, you know, how they do it traditionally. So this is definitely not traditional Tankara style fishing. This is just me fishing with a Tankara rod. I've been enjoying this little, little piece of water. And I can't think of a better place to try better fish than in here. So let's see how it goes. Let's check this out. It's all set up. That knot there is pretty neat. It's just a loop. And I think that's like some sort of an overhand knot. They meet. And that's enough pressure to hold your your mate. I'm going to call that fly line. I don't know what they call it in the 10-kara world. Like I said, I'm not a 10-kara. You know, this is me fishing with a 10-kara rod. I really don't know tr the traditional way they use them. Uh, but let's see what this is all about. And this is just fly lines. I'm going to get that eventually straightened out seems a little stiff see it's a really thin thin rod let's get it going two and it's just line on the rod i like the, the compact ability of fit right in my bag and there is the rod there so pull some twists I don't know if I'm doing this right, if not correctly. We'll get a nice and firm, all the way up to the tip. Let's take a look. Here's the, like I said, that's some sort of a fly line. And I guess, let's take the line, see how long that line is. That, just about the little, that line is just about the length of the rod and then the leader. Somehow I'm thinking the length of the line and the leader, but okay, there's a connection on. The leader's tapered, so I guess we're gonna pick out a couple of flies. Before I start, I'm gonna make sure my leader is straight. Ooh, that wasn't good. That was. Okay, that's at the knot. It's all right. Uh, that was good. I did that. But I'm going to straighten out my my line. My I want to call a fly line. Uh, is that really what it is? Or casting line? Get a good and straight. And it's a windy one out today. I'm used to holding the line with my hand. Okay, so that. Yeah, I think we could keep that length. Uh, I'll, I'll work with what we got. Alright. Step back here. Okay. Let's see what we're. Okay, I'm gonna get the feel, see what we can do with this. So I'm gonna put on a leader and set up some flies and get fishing. It's a 4X tippet. And uh, definitely going to put on some nymphs, I think. So I'm going to just drop a loop on here, drop that loop on, set up my nymphs. I think I'm going to go with two pound below that second nymph. I think it'll just sink and play better. So I got the 4X, and that's very thin. That's got to be a 6, 7X. There are the nymphs. I'm thinking using some sort of a bead head, but I think I'm going to go to the, the stick with the hair ear. I'm going to double up on them. Cool thing about the bent eye hooks is it's easier to get your line through with these tiny, tiny hooks. That might be a size 14, I'm not sure. So we have it all, all set up here. It's a fairly long line. I don't have to get used to it. You don't bang the tip on a tree. I don't think any fish is gonna break it. And we already got it all set up. I'm gonna start with I'm gonna have to shorten that. I'm gonna do the double nymphs. Got two two nymphs. And uh, I'm gonna start like that. 
see if there's any fish. And uh, maybe later I'll drop a float somewhere, change things a little. I want more depth. I think I'm just going to put another nymph on it. So, I'm going to start here. A little roll cast seems to work. And so I'm just starting with a, the nymphs. Double dot. Actually, a chartreuse woolly bugger might be. I'm keeping an eye on my top nymph. I can see it better than that. Something will eat it. I'm waiting to see if that nymph just goes left, right. I'm just getting warmed up here. Getting a feeling of the of the run. I'm choked up on it. I like that roll thing. One more in here. I like that. The roll cast seems to do it. I feel I can do more with a, my line hand in there than I can with just the rod hand. That I'm not liking too much, but we'll work with it. Water is murky, so maybe, maybe I will try one of those bubbles. Oh! We got our first fish on the tank camera. What is that? I think that's a trout. What is it? No. Beautiful. It's a bluegill. Wow. There's a big one for in here. Whoa. He was fighting good. It's a nice bluegill. And this little water. I've seen bigger ones though. So cool. First fish with the Tankara style fishing. Like I said, I'm not a. <laughs> I don't. I would not call myself. So, I know that there's professionals, but I thought it. Uh, certainly not. Um, I'm just doing me with a Tankara setup. How I, how I fish. So, wow. All right, maybe we'll get the hang of this. That's the connection. It's it's actually an overhand knot to a loop. It's fairly easy to undo. And you can use, bring, I guess, different length leaders if you need them. It's starting to rain. You can bring different length leaders and change them. But I'm just using it as it is, enjoying the Tankara style fishing with the Tankara rod. I'm going to start walking downstream. I just had a take, I think. I see my niche. Oh, yeah, I think there's... All right. All right. Whoa. Really got to get your hands up. Oh, I'm a five. Got to get better at landing then. Oh, what's that, man? We're doing... It's really cool. Some Kara style fishing. I'm gonna start walking downstream with this guy on his way. It's really the Tankara fishing. It's really super basic. Very enjoyable. I am definitely enjoying it. Uh, would I do it every day? Probably not. The only thing I find is I don't have much. I'm so used to using my line hand and uh, some kind of getting used to that with the Tankara rod. I'll try one more in this bend here. I think it'd definitely be more manageable with less line in this little water. Okay. I'm just working it for what it is right now. <coughs> oh! Oh! 
took me by surprise. I think there was another one on. And that's a yellow perch. They're all taking that bottom nymph, which has me thinking I might go to put on another nymph before I go with the float. They might have had a trap there. I've seen something bigger flash, so I'm going to work through here again. I think there was a fish. And I said, oh, fishing around the tree seemed a little bit cumbersome. I guess there are ways around it. Let's notice the position of where you're standing is really good importance. See if there's any activity. The stream does seem somewhat alive today, so and the plan is I'm gonna go through with the double nymphs and then let's try something here. That's not bad. Go through with the double nymphs. Oh, oh, oh! You hit, something hit that. Let me get that back in there. I'm going to work through with the double mints. Then later, I might, probably might drop on a float. So I need more depth. All right. Let's see. Here, oh, what's that? It's a, it's not a trout. Hold on, there. let's get. No, it's a bass. So I am liking. He took. That's the first guy. On the top nymph. Over here, we're doing Tankara style. There's fly fishing. And now I'm contemplating on, I was going to shorten that line, but I think I'm going to keep it long. I see the value now. I can work it a little bit, a little bit more thorough through. So, and wider, deeper pools, and I wouldn't have been able to, but at the same time, I'm kind of restricted in those smaller, tighter pockets. I want to fish this through just a wee bit more. I'm just walking, fishing down through. I think when I walk back, I'm gonna cycle through again. I think I'm gonna shorten that 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 fly line on there. I think a little less line would be perfect. I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe line and leader are about the length of the rod altogether. I might, you know, take off a little. Uh, this, I don't know. I'm just kind of doing it as I go. I'm finding in here, definitely the longer line is a big advantage, clearly, because I can cover more water. And we're getting perch. Interesting, they're taking that top, top, the top nymph in here. Both the pass, the bass, and the perch. And the moving water. They seem to be. They were hitting that. The bottom then. Let's kind of. Let's get that nymph down naturally. Yeah. Sink it. Sink. And this is only a. Fly, your line has some slack, that mint's going to do its own thing, and those little twitches in there really make it. Swing it over. I don't know what that's doing, but I think it's working. So right now, I am working through with a float. Put on a float. And another nymph on the bottom. It's raining out. Well, I'm gonna fish a little under here. Hopefully it'll stop. It's 
it's cold. It got cold out too. What's this? Whoa! I think we got. This might be our trout. Ugh, I gotta run. Wow, this is getting difficult. I think. See a bass or a trout? It's dark in here. It's a nice, nice, nice little bass. Okay, let's get him. He fought really good. There he goes. It's right there. Now we can grab him. Let's see. It's right behind that rock. See him? And maybe he can't. He took off. That was cool. That was kind of weird. I had to. I had to uh, run back with him. Because I couldn't get the rod tip up because of that. Temperature dropped. I would say it's probably if, if you're into fly fishing, I'm going to keep this just in my car. Because uh, you don't know. Uh, oftentimes if you're fly fishing, something goes wrong with your rod or reel. Uh, you can grab this right out of your car and save the day that's a lot of what fishing's all about is saving a day i'm definitely going to do this again really enjoying the tankara rod style fishing so i'd like to thank my friend tim who who uh gifted me this tankara rod oh more than some few years back and i told him i would definitely use it and uh and uh and uh, we did we're using it now enjoying it and i take i say i'm going to do something but sometimes i take my time with it now one thing i noticed is your position is ultimately important at least while i am doing this because you don't have your line hand i can't adjust the length of my line i have to adjust the length of the rod so kind of get that fly hanging in an effective zone I really, really to get the most out of it. It's, all, it's a big matter of seeing some where I'm standing. Doing that there Tankara style fishing and I I don't know the proper Tankara Tankara way to do things um, but I do kind of know fish and I'm going by feel with the Tankara rod I don't know if this is how they do it uh, I don't know if this is how they cast I don't know if they got their own flies um, I don't know what kind of leaders they use uh, don't know how they choose their rods but I am just working this how I am going to be working it how of course i be me and uh, that's what we've been doing today so it's getting dark now and just having fun with the thing care of fishing sink and edge of those bubbles break it across kind of like a split tail bubble junction there so if I was a fish that's where I would be and there he is so <laughs> this would be grander I think that's one of those blue bills I said it's Pull in your arm, in the rod. It's getting dark now. 
I don't know if you can see. Yeah, that's one of those blue guys. He grabbed that limb. Oh, there he goes. You didn't even have to unhook him. And thanks for watching. Really enjoyed the tank care of fishing today. Have a good afternoon, night, day, evening, wherever you are. And uh, real quick storage, I guess. It just slides all right back in. Putting the rod back. Really compact, like I said. Be awesome just to keep in the car. Definitely enjoyable to fish with it like this all day or keep it in your car and use it my hand it's icy out temps just drop and that's it